So for the longest time, if you're like me, you've heard musicians um, going in and out the key and you want to know, how do I even start? Like, where would I even start something like that? And that's what this video is about. And in fact, there is a song. If you learn this song, it will start you on your journey to being able to seamlessly change between keys. It's a song by Take Six, and I'm not going to play the audio in the video because I don't want the YouTube video to get demonetized. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw it up on the screen so you guys can take a look at that if you want to and come back to the video. But I'm going to play it here. Some of you may have heard it. I'm going to play it on the piano. It's in the key of C, right? So the song goes like this. You may have heard this song before. Let me know in the comments. It's in C. It's super easy to Something happened there. We're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about it. Something happened here. I'm supposed to be in C. I am in C. These are all white notes, but something happened. <laughs> We're gonna talk about it in this video. Learn that song, it's gonna actually help you switch between keys. And I'm actually, a little bit later in this video, I'll go ahead and show you the notes. I want you to listen to Quinnell playing, God has smiled on me in the key of C. And I wanna see what he does. Check this out. God has smiled on me. Now listen to this How question. How do you decide, like, which is it just random? Like, are you just like, I'll go and eat? Is it random? Or you... See, is it random? <laughs> That's the question. How, how do you know what to pull from and where to go? And, and what I wanted to say is, you can really pull from any key. Let me just start off by saying that you can pull from any key. But there is a relationship that's inherent in the minor third relationship. And if I'm on a C, and you go up to get the minor third, you just count up three half steps. So there's this one, two, three. There's a relationship between the key of C and the key of E flat. But I can also go the opposite opposite direction. So I can go down three. One, two, three. So there's a relationship between C and A, and there's a relationship between C and E flat. Those keys are related to the ear. Those changes will sound Great, and then that's exactly what he did. God has smiled on me. I, we're in the key of A now where we were in C, so we're borrowing chords from A because it's one of the minor third relationships. Twinkle, let's do twinkle, twinkle, little star. Let's do the E flat. E flat now, right? Um, back to C. So, did you see how those naturally weaved in together? Now, this is cool. Now, don't now follow this. You see how those naturally weave together? It's so cool. But check this out. Just like I went to E flat, I can go to A. And we're going to get into some practical examples, but, but just kind of listen to the overview of this. So I'm in the key of C. See? And then, um, da -da. <laughs> where am I at? I'm still in A. I can go to F sharp. Why F sharp? Because I was in A and I went down one, two, three. The natural relationship between the A and the F sharp to the ear sounded so natural. And so there's relationships between these keys that sound really good. Chords and multiple keys. I'm gonna take this seventh chord and I'm gonna go up the scale. The second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, 
the sixth, and now we're on the seventh chord, which is a B minor seven flat five. This B minor seven flat five belongs to the C family, right? So. belongs to the C family of chords. But this could also be an A chord. This could also belong to A as a two chord, because if I'm in the key of A, this is the one and this is the two. And even though it's not a minor chord, it can still work in A. Now, someone say, well, I would prefer the minor. Yeah, okay, that's fine. But it, the chord works <laughs> as a two chord of A, but as a seven chord of C. It's the same chord. And so that indicates to me a natural way to change a key into two related keys. That's exactly what the Take Six song does. So in the song I played earlier, and I said, you need to learn this song, it uses that exact relationship. So check this out. I want you to play a C chord, and we're going to walk the bass down in the key of C all the way down to the B. So watch this. So the best way to understand things is to actually get the piano try and Check this out. Now I'm at the B chord. It could be a replacement of the seven chord in C. You could just be playing the minor seven flat five as a sus voicing, which I do all the time. I could replace the minor seven flat five with a sus. So it could be a C chord, but it could also be in the key of A. And in this song, it is in the key of A because watch what happens. Every note after this, now, I'm at the five of A, which is a dominant chord, and now I'm in A. And the natural relationship between C and A is so apparent here, and it sounds so good to the ear. Which is exactly what Quinnell did when he switched from C to A. But watch what the song does. When it goes to A, it's gonna go like this. Now, where am I at now? Well, I could be at the seventh note in A. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Or I could use a natural relationship that exists between the key of A and F sharp. And I can use the seventh in A to set up the two of the new key. Because when I'm here, I could go back to the key of A, or I could use this chord to transition, go out the key to G flat or F sharp, because this is the two. <laughs> Love this stuff, man. Y'all get y'all y'all follow me. So, and then they go like this. But now what, what would be the natural relationship now between a minor third down from F sharp? Well, one, two, three, it would be E flat, which means that there's a natural relationship between F sharp and E flat. So now, I'm, now that I'm in F sharp, it goes like this. <laughs> this chord is so nice, but it's my transition to get to E flat. because E flat and C are related, they can go straight back to the C. And it sounds great to the ear, okay? So before I go on, let me just teach you, um, you can skip to the next part of the video, but those of you who wanna learn this song, here, here it is. Play a C chord, walk it down. And then I want you to play, and just play, go ahead and play an A chord in the right hand. And now in the left hand, I want you to think in your head two. I'm playing the two of A. 
then go to the five and it's going to be an a flat c e and then i want you to go to the one okay which is it's just a and e in the left hand and a a flat c sharp and e in the right hand and then i want you to do now we're playing notes that are in the key of a now and now you're going to go to a, what's called an f sharp sus4 which is an f sharp b and c sharp and now you're doing a two five one of f sharp the two is an a flat take the f sharp down to an f and take the A flat to the five, which is A, D flat. So it's gonna sound like this. And now you're gonna take this B to a B flat. This will help you with your key changes. And then now take this to an F sharp and a left. And now we're in F sharp. So I'm doing notes that are in F sharp because I'm in F sharp now. And then I want you to do the same thing. Oh, look at this chord, man. <laughs> it's E flat sus4, which is an E flat, A flat, and B flat, which is an F. Go up to the five, because we're in E flat now. The five is a B flat in the left hand. And take this E flat to a D. And then to the one, which is just taking this E flat down a half step. I'm sorry, take the A flat down a half step to the G and take the B flat to an E flat. Sounds so good. Let's play together. Then I'm going to the next part of the video. But I want you to learn this because it's going to really help you with some of these transitions. To the five of A. To the one. Now we're in A. Melody's in A. I'm in F sharp at the two. To the one. Now I'm in F sharp to the two of E flat, to the five, to the one. See, you like that transition? Because my head is now thinking C, so I knew what chord to play, you know, to set up my C. So, cool stuff. So now I want to, I want to give you an exercise that will help the brain to kind of understand how certain chords are in multiple keys. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to go from C. The bass note of these chords are going to go from C to go up three. One, two, three. It's going to go to E flat. Then it's going to go up another three. One, two, three to F sharp. Then it's going to go up another three to A. And what you're going to do is you're just going to play two chords, just a major seven and a minor seven. <laughs> and it's simple, right? So major seven, minor seven, and then go up to the E flat. Do the same thing. Major seven, minor seven. F sharp, major seven, minor seven, A, major seven, minor seven, and then back to C. Now, I want, you, I want you to check this out. Now, here's where we talk about chords being in the same key. So if I go major seven and I go minor seven, what chord is this? <laughs> what is this? Some people are going to say it's a C minor seven well is it <laughs> see the ear this is what we do on this channel is we do ear teaching is it a c minor seven or is any e, or is it an e flat six <laughs> if i take this chord and i take the c and move it to the top what do you hear what do you see see this is where the relationship between chords and keys is so unique because in actuality what you're doing then is a C major 7 the C minor 7 works for two keys both the C and an E flat <laughs> so it could be set up to do multiple things so now what we're going to do is just play Mary Had a Little Lamb in C, okay? Because um, that's going to be the easiest song, and a lot of you who have been playing can play that song. And what we're going to do is we're going to experiment with changing the key, which is something I want you to do when you get this video off. 
I want you to just practice this changing keys, starting with the natural relationships first and then building on from there to just go into any key. But for today, let's just keep it in the keys that are related to C, which we know would be E flat, A. Remember, you can go up or down. So. Do a minor here. So snow. I'm in E flat. Two of F sharp. flat went back to F sharp are you hearing these how these naturally sound I went from F sharp to C <laughs> skipped it What key am I in? E flat. You guys seeing how this works? Changing keys. Changing keys using the natural relationships that are built between the minor third to do just easy songs like this. And it, and it sounds so natural to the ear, doesn't it? One of the things I want you to do is start thinking about relationships. You know, I, I liken 12 keys to 12 children. And <laughs> some of you have some serious favorites and you're neglecting your the kids because like you have, <laughs> you, you take the every, every time you, every time you're visiting the same child, you, you know, you play with them and the other side is sitting up there in a the corner like, like what? And like dad don't, dad or mom, he don't pay me no kind of attention. <laughs> And, and here's the thing about it um, is that when we talk about borrowing from other keys, and I've always said that when you are learning another key, it's, you're not starting over because since all the keys are related, if you look at keys as being children, they all have the same parent. So they all have some relationship to each other. And so what's happening is if you are learning another key, you're actually helping the current key. All right. If, if see the, uh, the reason some of you hit walls is because you learn, you can play in D flat, but you're not as comfortable in A. But what you don't realize is that there are things that you can borrow from A that will make your D flat better. And so the mastery of each key is doesn't mean that you're starting over from the beginning. When you play in other keys, you are helping the current key and you're building your vocabulary knowledge in every key. <laughs> so this is the motivation and this is the inspiration for you to become proficient in all your keys simply because you'll have every key's chords at your disposal and it will give your your playing a certain breadth and depth to it and some of this has to be felt it's not we always try to overanalyze the music process like everything has to be explained but some things when you explain it it loses its feeling it loses its emotion it loses its power and there's a lot of things that musicians do that they just can't explain why because it was just felt and the mastery in a certain key is what gives us that so that our playing is not logical, but it's emotionally based, right? Because it's coming from a story and it's coming from personal experience. And that's the best kind of music that we can have. Not, a, not something that you wanna break down and can theorize, but something that you can really feel 
and something that you can take with you and that you really truly enjoy. So thanks again for watching. Um, tell me what you think about the video because obviously I'm just doing, I feel like I'm just kind of rambling right now, but um, <laughs> it's just kind of how I'm thinking in terms of keys and relationships between keys. So uh, let me know what you think and we'll see you guys next week.